Hello. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Greetings, everyone. Welcome. Good to see you all. Welcome. Welcome, 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 guys. Good to see you. Hey, D. Oh, so excited to see you. You are the first year today. Okay, no, after Cornelis, you are the second. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, Finn. I appreciate you. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing? How have you been? Hope you are good. Cornelis, sweetheart, good to see you. Welcome. Yeah, welcome, guys. Good to see you all. Let's go. Jane L. Whoa. Greetings to you. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate you. Okay. Uh, welcome. How are you doing, Jane? Good to see you. Hope you are good. Hope you are doing amazing. Welcome. It's really a delight to have you guys join me here tonight. Believe me. I feel so excited whenever I come live and I see you. Trust me, I feel excited. <laughs> yeah. Coco, Coco, Shy. You know, so you knew that I wanted. Lady Posh. Good to see you, Lady Posh. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. And Mommy Ifechi. Oh, my mommy is here, guys. My mommy is here. My mommy is here. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mommy, for coming. Thank you, Lady Posh TV. I appreciate you, friends. Hey, guys, you know how we do it. A big, sweet, juicy chance up for me. Go ahead and smash the like and share out the stream, okay? Let's warm up. Thank you for that sweet thumbs up, Lady Porridge. Thank you. Thank you, Jane, for the sweet thumbs up as well. Cornelius, Mommy Peachy. Jane, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, she dropped it already. Thank you so much. Huh? Yeah. This is my music box. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I really do appreciate you all. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Yeah, let's go. Thank you. Welcome everyone in the chat. How have you been? How is your day going? Well, in Brazil, it's been a beautiful day, but it's been raining cat and dog all day. It's a raining season again. So tell me, what's the weather like where you are watching me from? Are you watching from America, United Kingdom, from Europe? I know Lady Posh is watching from Italy, Mommy from UK, D from America. Jane, where are you watching me from? I appreciate you, Cornelius from Brazil, like, woo, from the four corners of the world. Thank you, guys. Let me know what is the weather condition like where you are and how has your day been? Oh, freezing, 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 freezing in the United Kingdom. So sorry, so sorry. Get some warm hug from me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Welcome. Yeah, and uh, today's discussion is around spousal killings oh goodness in as much as this is not an interesting thing to talk about like but i still feel it's very important that we keep talking about it spousal killing has become the order of the day like guys does it not worry you or bother you guys when you hear things like this or when you come you know to the news and you're hearing news of you know spouses killing themselves We've been talking about abuses in marriage. We've been talking about domestic violence. We've been talking about unhealthy union. We've been talking about all these vices. But the worst of them all are the spousal, is the spousal killing. 
Okay, very cold, mommy. Oh, very cold weather here in UK. I thought it was sunny this morning when I watched your video. Jane, where are you watching me from? What's the weather like where you are? You know, the worst of it all is this pausa killing. And when I read on the news yesterday about this professor in United uh, States of America, Professor Morinus Iwo Iwuchuku, it broke me because this guy is a Nigerian man and he's an Igbo man. He's one of us. He's a Nigerian guy. And this isn't the first time things like this are coming to the news. Last year, we had about how many spousal killings over there in America alone. And then this year again, we are starting the year with this. Oh, okay, mommy. Okay, I get We are starting the year with all these negativities. Like, is there an end to spousal killings? Is there an end to domestic violence? You know, when a man travels abroad, he travels abroad for a greener pasture. And sometimes they come back home to pick a wife. And in most cases, like in some cases that we've heard, this man brings home a wife, you know, come to Nigeria, get married, bring the woman over. And then before you say Jack, they're already having issues, having crisis to the point of deleting themselves. Last year, we, towards the end of last year, it was the news about this guy and the wife that, that uh, you know, deleted his wife and himself. Why? Because the wife, you know, he said the wife has been disrespecting him. He made a video before he even passed on, like he recorded everything. The, he called 911, and before the 911 would get there, he already deleted the wife and was waiting for them, telling him everything the wife did to him before he deleted himself. So when the 911, when, when, the, when the cops got there, it was too late. And these two people are Nigerians, they are evils. Or is it the ones we hear in the United Kingdom? Or is it the one across Europe? Let's not even talk about the one in Brazil. It's everywhere. Trending Gs with Octavia Cara. Good to see you, Queen. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. And thanks for that sweet thumbs up as well. Yeah, it's everywhere. And this is scary. It's becoming more and more scary. Now, this Professor Morinus Iwa Iwuchuku, so that, that, that broke the news yesterday, that the news broke out yesterday, rather, it, this, this man is 59 years old, a professor. He was actually teaching in Nigeria before he traveled out of the country for a better job, for a greener pasture. And though there is no details, you know, about um, his whether he's married to this American woman, what we just heard, uh, her name is, um, I, I, I just got the name not too long. Her name is, um, is uh, let me get her name, the woman's name. Because they are just companion, they are just companion. They are not married. Yeah, Charles is, is it Charles June? You know, welcome, Comfy Kitchen. Good to see you. Welcome. Oh, it's a delight to have you here, Comfy Kitchen. Welcome. Thank you, Blessing Posh. Oh, you are so kind, Blessing. Thank you so much, Lady Posh. Thank you. Welcome. Please kindly drop the thumbs up. There is no details around their marriage, whether they were married, whether uh, okay, whether they were married or they've been living together for years or, or they have children. There is no much details. Their details is, you know, the information is still sketchy. But what we could gather is that they have been having, you know, domestic, you know, um, they've been having crisis, marital, not marital crisis. It's been violent since their stay and neighbors have been worried about them that this isn't the first time that they've been hearing noises of these two people arguing or fighting. Now, this recent one that happened now, this last misunderstanding between them, nobody know what really happened, what transpired before they both deleted themselves. It's like a suicide murder, like a murder suicide case right now. Because from what the, 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 the SWAT team could gather is um, that the woman, um, they both had knife cuts around them, that the woman stabbed him and then shot herself. So it's a suicide, it's a murder suicide case right now. And this man is 59. The woman is 50. What is happening? How are, are, where are we are still waiting for details about this information? But right now, what we gather is that this man is a Nigerian man living, and this woman is his partner. They didn't say why. So it's very likely they are not even married. 
It's very likely they've just been living lovers. You know how it is abroad. Some people travel abroad and then because they can, they, 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 you know, they are avoiding marriage due to the, the wahala that comes with marriage. They just decide to just, you know, do living lover. No string attached. Some of them go as far as raising children together without much commitment. If couples that are married, legally married, are doing this, now even living lovers, those who are cohabiting together, are doing this. Is it not scary? Why am I making this live stream today? Especially people living in diaspora. Mommy Pechi has been making videos on mental breakdown, on people's mental health breaking down. She's not far from the truth. You see couples living together, but they are not in talking terms. It's from one domestic violence to the other, from one abuse to the other. And they still remain in that marriage. They remain patching things, struggling to keep faith. Those living abroad need to sit. In fact, it's time to sit down with your spouse and trash issues. It's time to sit down and dialogue, communicate. Because this thing occurs as a result of lack of communication, proper communication. Instead of communicating properly, you see people shouting on top of their voices, wah, 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 wah. who are you? You can't do anything to me. I brought you to this country. You must give me your paycheck. I brought you to this country. I got you this job. You must submit your paycheck to me. Or you see the woman saying, I brought you over. As the man of the house, you are supposed to do the house chores. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to respect me. You have no right to demand for my paycheck. No more proper dialogue or communication. This is troubling, especially for those in diaspora. Sometimes this could be as a result of mental breakdown. And it is true because abroad is not easy. It is not easy in diaspora. It is not easy because the man is struggling, the woman is struggling. There are so much bills to pay. There are all the issues that is affecting their mental health. Instead of trashing it, they don't have time for that because they are busy. They are busy working. Fini Media, TV Media, welcome. Thank you so much for coming to uh, Fini. Welcome, I really appreciate you. They don't have time for themselves, no time to rest, no time to even relax, no time to spend together, no quality time at all for one another. Because life abroad is work, work, work. If you don't work, the bills are piling up. The bills are piling up. And when couples don't create time, they don't create time to be, to, you know, be together and dialogue, have a honest dialogue, honest communication. These things are piling up and it gets to a point where the person decides that I can no longer take this. I've had it up to here. What must have happened? What, what, what must have happened? How did this their issue degenerate up to this very level? How did, it, how did it go down like this? To the point of a woman waking up one day and saying, I can no longer take it. To the point of a man waking up and then pulling the pistol on the wife and say, I can no longer take it. These things don't happen overnight. They are piled up issues, unsolved issues. Like the cops who say unsolved murders. This one is unsolved issues that are piling up between couples. When you have misunderstanding in your marriage or your relationship, and you know this thing is gradually degenerating. Please, it's about time to sit down and dialogue. Have a call. Because one thing that is lacking right now that we are seeing is lack of communication. Communication breakdown. No dialogue. The woman is busy working. It's either she's working 12 hours or she's working 14 hours. The man himself is equally working and they're all working and sending money back home. They don't have time for themselves to even invest in their private lives. In their marital life, there is no time to invest. It's all about work, home, work, home, work, home. No vacation. No time to rest or cool off because they have to work to send money back home. 
how did this thing degenerate up to this very moment? This man, this uh, Iwuchuku that passed on right now, what argument, because according to neighbors, that they have been arguing, they could hear voices, and they heard the man saying, she stabbed me, she stabbed me, and he was, she, he was screaming, he stabbed me. They probably locked the door. And while he was screaming, he stabbed me, the next thing they couldn't hear anything, and neighbors had to call the cops and say, hey, come over, something is happening. A neighbor here has been shouting that, you know, his partner stabbed him. And everyone went silent. A colleague or a friend tried reaching out to him. They couldn't get in touch to him and they had to come to the house. When they called the cops, the, the SWAT team broke the door open and found the man lying lifeless with stab, knife stabs on his body. The woman herself equally have some cuts around her body. But what killed her was the gunshot, self-inflicted gun wound. Because she deleted herself. She knew that she would be going behind. How come people, how, how, did, how did we get to this level of even conceiving of deleting a partner? Someone you eat together with. Someone you, you, like you're intimate with. You do things together with. I was discussing with someone who told me that this is very possible. And she told me this. She said, there is someone out there, a woman, a friend of hers, who isn't talking to her husband for, for you know, okay, they've, they've not been talking to each other for a very long time. Welcome, Angelicious Kitchen. I appreciate you. They have not been talking. They've not been communicating. And things are so bad, the man is not ever even helping out with the bills. The woman is the one working so hard night and day to put food on the table, to ensure that the children's school fees are paid, to ensure that they pay their house mortgage. While the man is not helping out because he felt she was the one that got a place. So it's left for her. But remember, they are couples, they are married, and they have children. They have children. Who sees all these toxic activities that go on in the family? How toxic the marriage has become. Every day, they, they are calling cops on each other. Every day, they call the police on each other. Every day, they call police on each other. For how long? I have always said this on my live stream. Marriage is not a do or die. Especially if you are living in diaspora. Be very careful. Do not force your spouse to remain in that toxic marriage. If it isn't working, it's about time two grown adults sit down to say, this is not working. It's about time we call it quits. And you can no longer stay together. Sit down and have this honest opinion. There are some men who have vowed that instead of you to leave me, I will delete you. Why would you want to even continue living with someone you don't like? A woman you despise so much. A woman you can't stand at all. Why would you want to keep living with her? You don't eat her food. You don't sleep with her. You don't do anything together. But you want to remain in that marriage. Is that supposed to be a marriage? Or a woman forcing a man to remain in a marriage? A marriage where, you are, where she's a control freak, where she disrespects the man, where she vows never to submit, where she does things to satisfy her own self, where she cares less about her husband. Why would you want to remain in such marriage, in such toxic marriage? Give Tonoa her welcome. Thank you so much for coming, Queen. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Please kindly smash the like, Queen. No, Dalurine. Why would Partners, couples, stay in marriage or in a, in, a, in a union that is so toxic. You are not happy. Towards the end of last year, we saw a video of an old elderly man and his wife abusing themselves on social media. They both turned on the camera. Turned on the camera and they were throwing insults and shit on one another. Recording everything and uploaded it. These are not young couples. These are elderly couples that are in their 50s, late 50s, if not even early 60s. But they turned on the camera. They have children and uploaded this video of how the, the insults they were giving to one another on social media. 
Thank you so much, Queen. How many more? Or is it just last week? One of, a Nigerian guy that is married to a white lady has been on live since last two weeks into last week, every day recording how much he and the wife, you know, fight and quarrel. The question I asked, I, I, you know, I, I asked the guy in the, in the comment section, they're like, is something wrong with you? Why would you turn on camera? You go live every day and then you're recording your wife, the, 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 the fight or the ongoing in the house, you're recording it. And people say it's for evidence. Really? What kind of evidence that you go live and then you start quarreling? What if this guy triggers her before going live so that others can see? If marriage is not working out, why is it a do or die? Why is it a must? This false killing is becoming the order of the day. And more people are tuning into this. More and more people are subscribing to this false killing. Like, instead of having a honest dialogue, where if this is no longer working out, they decide to part with, no, they would rather stay there, killing themselves, deleting themselves, and not even thinking about what happens to these children that they brought into the world. Not thinking about how it affects the children's mental health. Not considering how this thing is going to affect the children because they are selfish, only consumed by their own anger and bitterness. Is, has marriage become a do or die affair? Has it gone this bad between couples? Look at a man that is successful. He's a professor of theology. The man is, I mean, he's, he's very, he's been working in Nigeria. He's been a lecturer in one of the universities before he traveled abroad. He's doing so well for himself. What about a wife? Is he married to that woman? Because what we hear in the news, partner, 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 because if they were married, you would have had wife. It would have been confirmed that this is his wife. Maybe the usual thing abroad, partner. Why spousal killing? Why is it so hard for people to part ways these days amicably, peacefully? Are we even talking about the ones that we even separate and vow that since I can't have you, no other person can have you? A woman, a nurse, late last year, was recently deleted after she left her marriage. Why she was on her way to work? She was deleted. Here in Brazil, Trust me, I no do, I no do. Now fight, oh. The moment you say you are not doing anymore, just be sure of the person you're in a relationship with or married with. Because a lot of people don't have this heart of uh, eating breakfast in peace. The moment you serve them breakfast, they vow that if I can't have you, no other person on earth is going to have you. And they will make sure they leave an everlasting scar or they delete the person. How did we get to this point? If anyone had told this professor that this is how his life would be cut short, would he have believed it? Would he have believed it that a woman would be the one to end his life, his partner, until we confirm she's the wife, for now she's a partner, just living lover. No legal uh, proof that they are married. Welcome, everyone. I really appreciate you guys. I would like for you to join me on this discussion on spousal killing. What is happening to marriages? How did we get to this point? Why are couples hating themselves so much to the point that they, they, they wouldn't even want to separate? Rather, they want to delete themselves. I'll be dropping my link here. I really appreciate you all. And Delicious Kitchen, thank you so much for coming. And everyone in the chat, God bless you all, okay? And if you've got more information on this trending story right now, please jump on the link. Let us discuss. One thing we have to understand in marriages, we cannot take away the role of communication, effective communication. Knowing what to say, how to say it, and when to say it is very essential in marriage. Not just marriage, in any relationship. What to say. In the heat of argument, how to say it when you are angry and when to say it. What do I mean by that? You're having issues, constant issues. 
how do you say that thing that displeases you, that thing that is triggering you, that thing that gets you upset, that thing that affects you in marriage? How do you say it? What are those? Do you communicate it in the way? And do you communicate or you just shout back or you just say things that will equally hurt your spouse? Communication is not just talking back. It is not just answering. Two people cannot be mad at the same time because when two people are mad, this is the this, this is the outcome of it. When two people are mad, they keep talking, but nobody's communicating. Nobody's saying anything. You are just talking on top of your voices. You are just talking, but you are not communicating. Or do you sweep things under the rug? When issues arise, do you treat it? Do you trash it? Or you just push it under the rug and pretend nothing happened, that all is well? Not trashing issues, not solving issues when they begin to arise. That time they are very tiny, they are very minor. You are not trashing them, instead you are sweeping them, around, you know, sweeping them under the rug. This is the outcome. It's going to degenerate. It's going to become so bad. It's going to be terrible. Eh? Cheese? Sorry, one moment, guys. Yeah, but I'm I'm just checking the details to see if there's updates that this man is uh, this woman in question is the wife. Okay, um, I'm reading from another source right now that it is the wife because I've been checking all the details I've been getting since is that this is his partner. But the detail I'm getting right now is that the woman is his wife, Chat Doom, is the wife. Oh my god, oh my god. Now we are waiting. Do they even have children? Do they even have children or are they living alone? Lumsy blog, thank you so much for coming, Queen. I, I really do appreciate you. Welcome. Thank you so much. Please kindly give me the thumbs up and share out the stream if you can. Okay. Family court records that uh, record shows that Iwuchuku filed for divorce. Okay, guys, let me read out this update I am getting right now on this story. Let me read that because I've been checking the news. Today is 19th. Whoa. I've been checking the news since morning to get details about this. Um, the university students and faculty are mourning the death of Marinos in Wuchuku, an associate pro uh, professor, uh, professor in the school's geology department who died Tuesday morning, which was day before yesterday. Um, the county officials identified in Wuchuku 59 and his wife, wife 59, 50, inside their home on Turncrest Drive in Wilkin Township Tuesday. County, uh, county police received a call from a third party at 9.53 a.m. requesting that police check on the well-being of a couple who were engaged in a violent domestic um, incident inside their home. The third party learned that the male had been stabbed. The female remained inside the resident with a firearm, police said in the news release. Uh, okay, along with neighboring department responded to the scene and held the resident. And okay, held the resident. When officers did not receive response, they requested the assistance of the county um, police uh, SWAT. Um, Alani County record shows that the couple married. Okay, they were married in July 17, 2017. They were married. Oh my God. Family record shows that Iwuchuku filed for divorce July 2nd, 2020. So this man has filed for divorce since 2020. You see, he has filed. Like I said, I've been trying to get the details because as of the time I was checking this, it was still sketchy. He has filed for divorce since three years ago, which was 2020. This is 2023. Okay. The proceedings has not been finalized. Hmm. Who knows if this woman in question was not happy that this guy wants to dump her or wants a divorce. Divorce is not it's usually messy abroad. Most divorce cases end this way, end in, in sadness, in pain, in death, and all that. Both the male and the female appear to have sustained lacerations, and the female sustained an apparent self-inflicted gun wound, gunshot wound. Police said homicide detectives responded to the scene and initiated an investigation. Neighbors 
Kimberly and Carl mostly were shocked by the news. Kimberly said that Iwuchuku was an upstanding, an upstanding neighbor and that no one saw it coming. I'm still looking across the street, Carl told the Duke. There is no word really. I'm kind of speechless because it was he was a good guy. Okay, an official statement released by the university on Wednesday said, Our thoughts and prayers are with Dr. Iwuchuku and his colleagues, students, friends, and loved ones, and we are focused on ensuring our community has whatever help. Okay, has whatever help they may need. Students and faculty from across the campus community shared how Iwuchuku impacted their lives uh, in the university. Hmm. Okay. Now, thank God I got this. Thank God I got this latest news right now. What happened now is the fact maybe this couple have been having these issues and the man filed for divorce already. But who knows if this woman isn't going for it? Like she's not happy about the divorce. And that's what I'm saying. Sometimes if you're filing for a divorce, it is better to separate. Even back home in Nigeria, filing for a divorce and staying in that marriage is usually very, very scary. It's risky. It's a risky game to file for a divorce and remain with your partner under the same roof. I hear people say that they have been divorced, but they still live under the same roof. Under the same roof. That is a very risky thing to do. Because when you are filing for a divorce, if you are the one that initiated the divorce, you don't expect your partner to be happy about it. You don't expect them to just be happy and celebrate, oh, finally, my husband is jumping me, or finally, my wife wants to let me go. When you're filing for a divorce, and you know that that marriage is toxic, it is better to separate, get another apartment, get another place. If it means squatting, squat with another person. Squat with someone, squat with a friend. Just leave that room if it is toxic. Because these people must have been having these issues. It's not the first time. For it to degenerate up to this very moment, it isn't the first time they started having this confrontation or started having fights. I wonder what made him. Since 2020, he filed for a divorce, though it has not been concluded. Divorce three years, almost three years, and they're still together. Were they dragging property? Because this is one thing that you know that, 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 that makes divorce very messy. Property, house, financial settlement. What were they dragging? How did it get to this point? There is no mention of the children because they got married 2017. How many years? That's going to five years going to five years marriage and the man has been deleted the man is gone five years and they fight for divorce since 2020 that means they've just been in that marriage for just three years before the before the man fight for divorce why did they not separate i mean he cannot say he won't be able to afford another place you know there are certain things we actually take for granted this is one of it. Toxic relationship, toxic marriage. It's something a lot of people take for granted. When it has become toxic, please, for, the, for your peace, for peace to reign, please leave that marriage. If it's very toxic, leave that marriage. A friend of mine, welcome you, CUD. Thank you so much, Omali Chawani. How have you been? How is preparation going? A friend of mine a couple of years ago told me how the husband was threatening her with knife and blade. How she couldn't sleep for a very long time. She was traumatized because this man kept on threatening her with razor blade. He claimed that she felt she's too beautiful and she's filing for a divorce. She wants a divorce. He kept threatening her. Told her he's going to waste her life and jump her body somewhere where nobody will find her. He traumatized her for a very long time. If she hadn't left, because how she, she had to run away from that marriage. She had to run for her dear life. If she has stayed and said she wants to wait for the divorce, who knows, will she be alive today? Will she still be alive? When, it, when, when you know that marriage is toxic already, it is 
plagued with violence and abuse and you file for divorce or you intend filing for a divorce, it is better. It is better to leave that roof. You cannot remain under the same roof while you go to court. If I'm a Louis one, you're my, oh my God, just been welcome. Thank you so much. Welcome, if you Louis. Thank you so much. Please kindly give me a thumbs up. I appreciate you. Living under the same roof, roof and filing for a divorce is a very risky, you know, risky game. Because the other part, you don't know what goes on in their mind. You don't know what they're thinking. You don't know if they're thinking, how can you leave me? You can't waste my life. I sacrificed so much. I've paid by you. Like, I did so much for you. I brought you to this country. Especially men who feel that they were the ones that brought the woman into the country. They want to take over. They want to run her life. They want to collect paycheck. They want to control her. They want to do everything to just to just grab the woman, even while abroad. Oh, yeah, your man, your man. Good to see you. Welcome, Queen. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. A woman you brought to the country, she's working, you are working, you want to collect her paycheck, you want to control every activity, everything around her because you brought her to the country. We have had cases like that. That man that shot his wife and shot himself was the same issue. He claimed the woman stopped respecting him and then she stopped giving the paycheck that he gave her that job. He got, he brought her there. Why would she stop giving her paycheck? Why would she stop giving her paycheck? Because he felt entitled to the paycheck. Or is it the case of a woman that equally deleted her husband because the man wants to just ruin her life Turn her into a slave in the house. Wouldn't give her freedom. There are women. Women are not equally excluded from this. Women who cool, come abroad and they want to live the life of single who buy married. No, no, Madina Chodi. They are married, but their eyes is everywhere. They can't even buy ordinary salt at home. They keep feeding the children with nonsense. They party. They go, you know, go out and sleep with friends. They don't come back home. At a time, the man have it up to here and say, look, I cannot bring a woman who will come to the house and stop, stop, you know, start to disrespect me. She can't submit. I don't know where she sleeps. I don't know what she does with her time. Sometimes these things can be sorted out, can be taken care of. But selfishness doesn't allow us as human beings. Marriage is between two adults who have decided to come together. And if you come together at the end of it or it isn't working, what is the need of staying together in an abusive marriage? What is the whole essence of staying together in a toxic marriage? What is the essence of co I mean, still living under the same roof when you two can stand each other? You are in marriage where you can't stand the sight of another person. You can't stand his sight. Why don't you leave? You have been in that marriage Five, ten years, yet is it, it isn't working. You want to remain there. For what? Remain there and, and just be, be, be miserable? Welcome, Estelle. Good to see you. Welcome, Queen. I appreciate you. Remain in a, in a marriage where you are feeling miserable. You are not happy. I mean, what is the whole essence of marriage? Companionship, procreation, friendship partner, to have someone you can talk to, someone you can communicate with, someone you can, you know, be happy with, someone you want to spend the rest of your life with. That is what marriage is all about. You want to spend your life together. You want to grow old together. Gabriela, welcome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you, Pim. Thank you. Welcome, Thunder Scorpion. Thank you. I really appreciate you. He was married to a white or black. Uh, was he married to a white or black? I think she should. I don't know if she's white or black, but from her name, the name sounds white. The name sounds white. <laughs> I they didn't say white or black. Welcome, Tricia Trish. Good to see you. Welcome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you all. Please kindly smash the like. Why would you want to remain in a marriage in a, in, in, that is that is plagued with, with abuse? With domestic violence, a toxic marriage, what is the whole essence of it? You, you stay there for years, choking your spouse, choking your partner. They are so miserable with your presence. They can't stand you. They are feeling like every day they wake up, they feel like just pushing the knife down your, you know, down your tummy. 
They feel like, you know, getting all your guts out. And yet, you wake up every day, you go to your separate ways. Are you not afraid? Are you not afraid of your life? You go to bed with someone you don't talk to, someone you don't eat from the same plate with, and then you go to bed sleeping peacefully. Like, how do you do that? Are you not afraid that someday something can snap and then they will do something crazy? Back home in Nigeria, this is what we have. It's either uh, a, uh, a wife pouring the, the husband oil, a boiling oil, boiling water, stabbing the husband in, in his sleep, pouring acid and all sorts of things. All terrible things you can even imagine. And they can tell themselves, worst case, I go behind. After a couple of years, I'm going to come out. Just like what my friend was told, that look, I can just, the man said he, he can delete her, dispose her body. If by chance they find the body, that he will go behind. And then maybe worst case, five years, he's going to be out. Mom of Triplet, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you. He boldly told her this. Since then, she's been living in nightmare until she decided one day, while the man went to work, she picked up her bag and psh, she ran away from that marriage. When she went to, that was when she filed for divorce. Why do we like taking risk? It is not a do or die affair. You mustn't die in that marriage. That guy is not the only one. It is done in this country. Ordinary relationship. You say you are not doing again. Please watch your back. I know to some people don't know how to eat breakfast in peace. You serve them breakfast, you look for your, you look behind. Because they will not eat that breakfast in peace. Who knows what must have transpired between this woman, this Miss, Mrs. June? What transpired between them that will make her do this thing? How did this fight degenerate to the point of picking up knife and stabbing the man, taking the life out of him? How did it degenerate to this level? Check people's temperament. As you are dating, check your partner's temperament. That is the whole essence of dating. It's a time for you to check. It's a time for you to look at them and ask yourself, can I really stand this person talking this way? When a man is angry, he picks up something remote and throws it at you or at the window or the television. Please know it that that next time he, he's going to pick up a weapon. A man is angry and he pulls his television off the wall and smashes it on the ground because he's angry. Next time he might pick you up and smash you on the wall. A woman is angry, she goes to the kitchen, picks up her plates and glasses and everything and begins to smash them and you think because she's angry. No, check their temperament. How they react when they're angry is very important. A woman who goes and picks up a knife, touch me again. If you say this again, I'm going to do this to myself. I'm going to do this to you. Check them very well before you sign I do. And even if you say I do, you still have every right to walk away from it when your life is in danger. Do not stay until somebody from nowhere will come waste your life away. Do not wait until they delete you. Walk away if it means leaving everything behind. For your life is worth more than everything you see in that house. Your life is more valuable, it's more precious. It is more precious than anything you can think of. Go to the hospital and see people battling with their lives. They're on oxygen. They're not thinking about anything. They're not thinking about money. They're not thinking about job. They're not thinking about family. They are not even thinking about anything. That's when you know the value of life. When you see people unconscious, people in coma, that's when you know how valuable life is. So why gamble it because of marriage? In as much as we know that marriage is beautiful, marriage is a beautiful thing. Oh, by God, I want to remain married. I want to grow old with my husband. But that is because if I am happy, I want to stay with that man. Why would I be in a marriage where I am so unhappy? Why would you be in a marriage and you are miserable? What is the essence? Why should you stay behind? Yeah, you don't need to pick a weapon if a man shouts at me. Yeah, it's a big red flag. Hmm? As many black men in America that have been lynched, yeah, uh -huh, lynched, 
because white woman lie, but blacks on topic, hmm, this is sad. It is very sad. It is heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. Hmm? It is heartbreaking. If it isn't working, please take a walk. When you see the red flag, do not allow love. Love, love, love. Especially this love abroad. Love abroad is not the same love you see. Love abroad, sometimes it is transactional. You see the red flag, walk away. You know this is red flag. You can see it. It is boldly written. It is staring at you. Why would you want to gamble with your life? A woman that picks up weapons at every little provocation, a guy that punches his, you know, punches the wall or breaks down the door. These are the signs of a toxic spouse. You are seeing it. Before this woman got to the point of picking up a knife to stab Iwuchuku, she must have been threatening. They must have been threatening one another. I'm going to do this to you. I will do this to you. And then you take it. Look, the very day a spouse tells you that I'm going to do this to you, know it that they will eventually do it. Do not take it lightly. This woman that, that passed on, um, uh, what is her name? Bimpo. She was threatening. I'm going to do this. All this, I'm going to do this. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. What day did she not do it? She did it to herself. She danced herself and then set herself ablaze. When a spouse is always threatening to take their life, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my life. I will do this to you. I will do this. I will burn this house down. Please. Stop joking with things like this. Stop taking it. Even when they come to apologize. Even when they come to apologize, they need to visit a psychiatric. They, in fact, they need to go for therapy. Because you don't know what goes on in their mind. Women, marriage is not a do or die. It's not, I mean, this for better, for, for worse. It is about time pastors, clergymen, reverend fathers begin to change this line for better, for worse. There is nothing for better, for worse anymore in marriage. Change that line. What is the worst? The worst has happened. Iwuchuku is gone. For better, for worse. Can somebody give me the definition of for better, for worse? No, I really want to know the definition of for better, for worse. In sickness and in health. I, be, I don't know because I didn't take this marriage vow. Can somebody give me the definition of for better, for worse in marriage these days? Why are lives being wasted like chickens? Why are lives, precious lives, being cut down? Why are lives being cut down? Because couples, two grown adults, can't have communication. They can't sit down. They can't dialogue. They can't have normal conversation. I was watching a show yesterday, and a guy, because he's angry, decided that he's going to starve his child the baby foods from the house what and the woman is still in that marriage a guy that is ready to start your baby or are we talking about the slaves in marriage despite everything they do to them they remain in that marriage a man is using you as a point back night and day you are still enduring you are praying, you are going to war room to pray. What are you praying? Who are you praying to? You want God to come in and bond you, pack your belongings and bond you out of that marriage before you know it's toxic? Are you a punch bag? It is no longer for better, for worse. It is. It is no longer for better, for worse. We have someone in here who just joined in at the discussion. Oh, you're your one, your mama, my queen. Have you taken a sip? Have you rested? I appreciate you for joining me tonight, Queen. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I want to, you know, give in my few um, cents, then I will leave this place to go upstairs. All right. So when I read about the story, I felt um, I felt pain because it, it didn't just happen. You understand? Mm. You can't just wake up and get a weapon to to deal with the other person. It started from little, little things that I kept on accumulating but the story wasn't so clear in the sense that we don't know for say for sure if the woman is um was his wife or who yeah the they said they were, they were married 2017 okay so and the man filed for divorce uh, 2020 
Okay. So it's still so ongoing. Yes. It's still ongoing. Yes. Okay. I'm happy mm -hmm. the, the picture is looking clearer. So the thing is, this, yeah. for what I gather, that woman is not a Nigerian, but we don't know if she's an African. So she could be from any part of Africa. She could even be a Nigerian woman. We don't know because um, a lot of things have mixed up in the society. So it could be a Nigerian woman, maybe of a different father. We don't know that much yet, but it's unfortunate that this happened because the community lost a dear friend, the university community lost a potential uh, person to them, somebody that is important. Yeah. Then we, we, you can't say it enough and we cannot cry about it enough. When marriage is not working, take a walk. In this case, it was not working for the man. He filed a divorce. But what we don't know here is whether the man refused to leave because most men will walk away from that home. The moment they are ready to file for a divorce, you don't have to drag any property for any with anybody. You already know the tendencies of your partner. Maybe he, this is her anger level, his anger level. The most important thing is to walk away with your life intact. I've had Absolutely. somebody that, that came telling us his own story, how he tried to walk away. The woman refused. Each time he tried to pack his things, the woman would look for trouble and cause trouble and call 911. Then um, it happens that the woman traveled out of the country. She traveled out of US. Then she he already knew that he might be coming back in two weeks or thereabout because she has to return to work. So within that short period of time, he wanted to leave. But the woman's mother was in the house with him. So when he was packing his things, the woman's mother called the woman overseas that your husband is, is packing, he's leaving. Then the lady where he was told the mother to call 911. <laughs> Yeah, so nine one one that, for what? Yes, that the man should not leave, should not leave that uh -uh. house. Is the so man a prisoner? Eventually, nine one one came. the The mother played along that yes, so the man he was hurting me. That's why he she called nine one one. So when they now came, they interrogated the the woman. The woman's story was not adding up. You are leaving the second floor, he stays in the basement because the marriage was no longer working and he's trying. And then how come, you know, the, when the uh, 911 people came there, the police interrogated and realized this woman wasn't straight. They said, ma'am, you have to let this man leave. And uh, sir, have you packed your things? He said, yes, my things, I'm almost done. I have one more thing to gather. Go now, get your, it was, please, we are there before the man left. So you can understand how controlling some people can be. So we uh -huh. don't know what happened in this uh, man's case. Maybe he was trying to leave and there was no opportunity for him. Or maybe he was busy dragging the property with this is my house that I paid my I paid with my money. I've paid the mortgage. I, you we don't know exactly what led to it. But yeah. I trust they are going to continue with the investigation to find out. But this mm -hmm. is an opportunity for people to know if you are in a marriage and it's not working you don't have to buy in the marriage you don't have to you know go six feet under because you want to remain married i've seen a lot of divorcees that are happier more fulfilled and even the other way around so life is worth living and it's only for the living don't go and buy yourself on or get to the point of somebody even buying you in the process because you want to hold on to your house or hold on to your property. Stay alive to acquire more property and don't let yourself go under six feet because of those things. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Oyoyo. Now, you know, uh, I'm, I'm worried for people in diaspora. The question is this. Why why would they want to remain? You, your man, your, you fight for a divorce. Is it not possible for the man to move his things and just get, even if he's not a home yet, that he can't buy a home yet, but at least move out and get an apartment, just rent a place while the divorce process is still ongoing? From all I gather, usually it's the man that moves out of the house in a, in the in abroad, like in US or maybe in UK. It depends. I don't know how it's in UK. It depends. One of the reasons why men move out because if, they, if there are children in the marriage, you understand, the government is after that the children will have a covering, which is shelter. And if there are children, most people, if they, at the end of the day, the women get custody initially before the court proceedings and all of that will happen. 
You understand? The police will even ask you, walk you out. Mm -hmm. You get your things, they will walk you out of your home. But we still have some stubborn persons. I know of a man that refused to, to leave the house because he felt it's my property. And remember, most of these men we are talking about, they bought these properties before the wives came in. Okay. Oh, so now you see. The properties are in their name. Then in the course of oh. cohabiting with each other, things happen. You now leave your property. Let's assume you've paid 15 years already. The mortgage is almost ah. over. And then you'll be forced to leave. Some people will not take it lightly. I know of a man, he refused to leave. Rather, he was staying in the house with the woman. And he can understand that kind of relationship. The divorce is already on. At that particular person, I think they've actually finalized the divorce. But he refused to leave because the law gave that opportunity for you to live in this Do they have kids? If I'm not married. They have Do they kids. have kids? Yes. And also there is a portion of the law that say you people can still live in the same home if you guys choose to. You understand? So this man... After a divorce. Yes. People still live together <laughs> in the are community. People playing Kalo with their lives. They are so playing that 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 with their lives. That particular man was vicious. And they said he refused to leave and then got into another relationship with another new and be doing romantic talk on the phone so that he could pepper the, the wife <laughs> in the house. At the end of the day, <laughs> He did something that made the man, the woman angry. The woman. And uh, she, he was very calculative. Some people are really evil. He was very calculative. He already knew if he, the things he would do that would trigger the, the ex-wife. So he did something. Mm. The woman was still angry. He now walked outside, went outside. Uh, the woman uh, grabbed a knife to go and puncture the tire. So he saw the woman was puncturing the tire parked at the at driveway. The guy now called 911. The woman did not know the guy had called 911. The moment the police came, they saw the woman with a weapon. Who do you think they would ask? Uh, they were escorted out of the house. The woman. So the woman. This one is called the satanic setup. Yeah. So it all depends. Because there is no child in the. We didn't hear about children in the, the police report or news interviews. I didn't hear about children in that marriage. We don't even know. No about it details will still unfold in the future but i the, the, the woman in question yo, yo yo is 50 and the man is 59 so there is every chances that they don't have kids together in that marriage because the marriage is not too long it's just barely uh, four years and okay you know? if so there's no mention of uh, children okay maybe there were no kids in the marriage you understand and that might be the reason why the man was not willing to leave his home to that leave. Seriously, you understand because mortgage in the U.S., some people do it 15 years, you're done paying, some 30 years. So you don't know the one, the man, maybe he's done paying for his home and all of that. So there are so many angles to look at this thing, you understand? But it's unfortunate that they don't have a third party to speak now that two of them are gone. So the only way we can be getting information, if the man belongs to the Nigerian community in his state, whereby he must have told somebody in confidence that this is what I'm going through in my home and this is what is happening. Or if he has talked to his lawyer, his attorney, because they, they said the divorce is ongoing. If he had talked to his mm -hmm. attorney, they are going to interview all these people. And if he had kids before in the marriage, you understand? The marriage. they are going to talk to them as well to be able to get to the bottom of this whole thing. He's a college professor. They are going to continue to do the investigation to find out what really happened in this um, kind of situation. It's really so mm. sad that it happened. Mm. And um, women, if you're hearing our voice, if you think you can't take it anymore, walk away. Likewise, the men, if you think you can't take it anymore, walk away. And you don't have to hold on to something, earthly things. Your life is more important. It's only the living that can make more wealth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Epic Mazad, welcome. Thank you. I really appreciate you. Mama Kripler, thank you. Divorce is, is not easy. See what Cora Obidi is facing. Uh, okay, look at Cora Obidi. Okay, that one, at least, they are, I don't know if they finalize their divorce. Cora Obidi oh, and Cora Obidi. And Cora Obidi is back yeah. to court. She's yeah, back they are to back to court. And then the guy, is, she, she's crying. The guy wants to take the children away from her. Yeah. You know? The, the guy is trying to fight for full custody. And that is just being mm -hmm. wicked because there is nothing this girl has done for you to demand full custody of the children. I really pray that he she has some 
dirty things about him that he can now put out there for the court to see so that she will get full custody. You got 50 50 custody, was not enough for you. Now you want, uh, he wants custody. full custody. I no. watched her video yesterday. I really felt for her when she was crying that, uh, what is he going to do to June? You know, look at June. She's still very young. I mean, if he can do what he did to her, how much more her child? And then these children are still very young. They need her. Can he take care of them with his job and all that? You know, I just felt bad. See, People are petty, yes. People are petty and wicked. Some men don't know how to let go easily. And that is why it is better when you find the opportunity, please go as far as you can. Go as far as you can. Coral will be this, if some people were blaming her that instead of her facing her children, she's every day online dragging these children about left, right, and center, or every day on social media, dancing naked and all that. I don't know. I'm not, um, I'm not a fan of either of them. I'm not an, a, a fan of them, but I just wish that um, this guy, because he's a guy, he's a man, won't be given full custody. These, these are young girls. How is he going to take care of them? These are young kids. They are still babies. They are still babies. I believe they need their mother. I mean, if she's okay and sound, they need their mother more than they need their dad. He should be providing, I mean, Shared custody would have been very, very bad. I don't know what this guy is holding against her. And I don't know if the court will, because the court abroad is different from the court in Nigeria. I don't know if this guy will succeed in taking these children away from her. I don't know how the system works over there, but I really yeah, feel sorry. He can succeed. I feel if he, sorry has, for her. he has some dirty things about Cora. He can succeed. For example, the court will be looking at, is she on drugs? Does she do drugs? The court... And will be if, looking at, is she abusive? Those are the things the court will be looking at. The court might not be looking at about the what she does on the internet. That is her means of income, and people should understand that. Everybody can be decent. Everybody cannot be decent. Everybody cannot wear Everybody the same can thing. be decent, really. Yeah, As a mother, of, please, she no, should be in modest. Terms wearing, <laughs> see, in terms of wearing decent clothes, everybody cannot be me. Everybody cannot be on turtleneck. And she's a professional dancer. So that is how she's she, known. That is her she, business. She that is. is her income. She, she. The Cheese family, welcome. Thank you so much. Yes, Oyoyo, she is a professional dancer. But in everything, you know, also know that the court may look at certain activities of hers in making decisions. They may look at, because the court will be looking at the interest of the children. If they see, if they, if they deem her not really fit enough as a mother to have these children, they will take the children away from her. You, you know, in you as know, much as I feel easy. sorry for her. It's easy for the court to see how Cora lives her life. You know why? Because she lives her on life social online. media. And then when yes, you go to most of her video, you can see she doesn't place some harmful objects around where her children is. She's a careful mother. The only thing people are holding her is because she danced naked. Everybody cannot dance wearing clothes. People mm. should get See what Mama Triplet said. She said the girl should behave so, so she maintains her custody. She allowed the child to say, Mommy, I am hungry on live stream. That's why he went back to court. The lady should be wise. USA don't joke with kids. US don't joke with kids. He said this. This is not the first time. Apart from that, Mommy, I'm and hungry. Sometimes she... I she wants the, the, she the mother's attention. My child and she's busy on life. She'll be telling her to calm down. See, host, my child can come now and tell me, mommy, I'm hungry. That does not mean the child has not eaten anything. Even the judge deciding that knows that. <laughs> the children what can if the child is hungry? Time. What yeah, if the child can... hasn't eaten anything? No, the children can determine that and say they are hungry 10 times in a row. They are looking <laughs> for your attention. What the, the, the court will be looking at is how is this woman towards her children? Are they unkept? Are they looked after? That's the interest they're looking they look at. They look healthy and well fed. Are they, are they looking healthy? Do, are they well looked after? It, do they come late to school? Do they come tatter to school? Are they coming with lunch pack? What is in their lunch pack? Those are the things the court will look after. For the fact that she makes, she dances naked, which is the provocation a lot of people have against that lady. You understand? Yeah. People should understand in the U.S., uh, hookers that do, um, what is it called? Those that dance on the pole. Strip dancers. Strip dancers. They earn mm -hmm. income. That is income for and them. And they have children. And they have children. So are you going to strip them of the of their children because they go to dance on the pole? No. 
Well, it's the same American system. So let's see how it plays out, if that is going to affect, because she's in the system there, she's in America there. So it's the law, the same law there. So let's see how yeah. everything is going to play out. So Justin, but unless Justin, Justin has something against That's her, maybe he has seen her Good. doing something and he recorded it. Good. Unless that would really get her in trouble. Proof of her being violent, proof of her uh, doing drugs, proof of her smoking and uh, uh, being alcoholic, Proof of her not catering for her children. Those are the things the court are majorly going to look after. The guy himself mm -hmm. is also on Facebook 24 hours. So if they want to do the screening and do the x-ray properly, they'll be doing x-ray on both of them. There were so many times he has, he, he has been with the children and they'll be saying, Daddy, this, the way he carries them on internet, they'll be looking at that, but those are not what the court is looking at. The court I really is, think is the child's life in danger. And when you're uh, doing this your live stream. Welcome, Professor Lifestyle. Welcome, Queen. I appreciate your presence here. I feel sorry for those children because if Cora is with them, they're on live stream. Justin is with them, they're on live stream. It's like all their life is around live stream. Yeah. <laughs> all their life is on social media. I really feel sorry for those children. But you see, like who we are saying on, um, in this, divorce can be very messy. Divorce abroad can be messy. So I wonder why a grown man, um, I know maybe because of the house thing, we want to remain under the same roof with the woman you filed a divorce against, like you want to separate from her. And maybe this woman is looking, look, you can't waste my time up to this very moment and you want to fight for a divorce, or I want this house. And the man is saying, I can't get this house. Look at the example you said, that guy wanted to leave. Maybe if the woman was in the house, she would have held the guy, throw her own cloth, call 911, a lot of them have done that. They will inflict injury on themselves and then call 911. I saw a video, a guy was recording why the woman, I don't know if it's the wife, but uh, in the video, he didn't mention it, it was the wife. And the woman was busy tearing her own clothes. Not meant that the guy was recording. She was pulling her own hair. Not meant the guy was on camera, recording everything. And when she called them, when the police came, what the guy did was they wanted to handcuff him because they saw her state. She was looking like someone well beaten. And then the guy just said they should hold on, show them. And that was how they saw. A Nigerian guy, a Nigerian guy, She they, they picked her up. They picked her up. She didn't know the guy was recording her doing all that. She was just shouting. Oh, Gwemo, oh, Gwemo, he's killing me. He's doing, oh, no, back up. Yeah, he was, she was just pulling her, not knowing the guy had camera on her. He didn't. When the cops came, they found they, they watched the video, and the woman was taken away. A lot of women have done this. They will, you know, inflict injury on themselves and then lie that the guy has been beating them. So if it's not working, why would you say that's the question I keep asking? Why do people want to remain for those who remain until their lives are, you know, are, are lives are, are, uh, their life is knocked out of them? Why would they want to remain? And for those who fight for divorce, staying under the same roof doesn't really make any sense to me. Oh, 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 That's a couple. We, we, we can sit here to, to talk about it, but we don't know the impact these things are, you know, you know, make on people's life. Let me give you a scenario here. This man filed for a divorce 2022. You said 2022 or 2020? 2020. 2020. Okay, so this will be three years now, right? So assuming he has finished paying for his mortgage, you expect him to be in, in an apartment paying for rent up till now. It's not easy. My dear. My dear, if he knows the kind of person and, the and woman again, is, see where I'm saying. If he this, knows, it's better to leave. If the marriage is just four years old, the woman has no claim on the house, so she can't because of that drive the man away. You understand? Of which we are not even sure. Yeah, we are not even sure how many years the whole thing is and all of that, because you have to at least been in a marriage for ten years and all of that. They have those st stipulations in in the US. Mm -hmm. For you to like start laying hold um this one and the major reason why they will give a woman okay the house the man has to go first before the decision is all finalized before they will now agree whether to sell the property or not tell to sell the property see if you have fallen i don't want to say the people here because i just want to be sane but if you have fallen in the hands of those people i'm talking about it's not easy for my fellow brother you know, they easy. People will not understand it. They will oh, yo, drag yo. you oh, yo, and yo. drain you. Oh, yo, yo. Oh, yo, yo. 
I know mm. it's not easy, but at least let the court until the court decide. Is it not safer to demand to move his bag from that yeah, house the, yet? The even thing is, is in this case, rent. we don't even know if the man came to pick his property, his things. We don't even know the whole scenario. No, the I neighbors, don't. they say they are still living together because living they have together. neighbors who said that they are, the man is always very gentle and very calm. You know, he's, he's such a very gentle neighbor. So there wasn't anything in the news from the interview of the, of the neighbors the around there. They are, yeah. Yes, the man is still living in that house full time. He didn't move out. It is unfortunate that this thing happened because nobody sees death and stays there. Nobody will ever see that death is coming and remain. If this man had had inclination that this woman was going to behave this way, he would have left. That is just the truth. It's not that the person oh, yo, yo. batched into the house to like, no, some people snap. Some oh, people yo, yo. Some mental people, issues. I yeah some people snap but do you know that others see it they know that their spouse is toxic but they keep they remain there they know this woman can can be uh creepy i mean how do i even use the word they know she can she can be crazy when she gets angry they know that like i said just yesterday i was watching and then a man is threatening the life of this woman and she several he has threatened her life and she remained so some people really see the sign they see the danger sign but don't believe that this person can do it you don't have to wait for the person to do it before you believe when a man is saying i'm going to do this to you i'm going to or you see somebody pick up something an object and throw it you miss it i mean misses you or you dodge it tell me the next time the person might pick up something very more harmful so people actually see this toxic i have seen a lot of toxic marriages to tell you that they see these red signs, they know their spouses are toxic, but want to remain. That is what I don't understand. Are you waiting for the person to cut you? I told you about a, a friend that the husband was threatening to cut her face with razor blade. He said it to her, I'm gonna cut your face in your sleep one day. You're gonna wake up with sharp blades cutting through your face. I can kill you and dispose your body and nobody's going to find it. Even when it's found you, I mean, I'll go to jail and come up. So those words, those things, those you can, you don't have to wait until the person has done it. What she did was to run away one day when the guy went to work. She left everything behind and ran for her dear life. Of course, she was traumatized for years. She was traumatized for years. So some people, they, they, they hear it. I'm going to deal with you. I will make sure you pay. I will deal with you. I will do this. And yet they remain. I know some people can snap. I know. Yeah, but the, what the, will make a woman remain when the man is threatening her life? Or what will make a man remain when a woman is threatening his life is what I don't understand. The, the thing is this, uh, you know, if you were, let's assume that this, um, that the man were to be an African woman. I would say maybe she has spoken to her mother and they said, they keep praying, keep trusting God yeah. is going to be better. <laughs> and oftentimes that's what we advise our daughters. Keep praying, you know, just be hopeful that it's going to be better. No mother will want to have you back to her home because of what the society will say. There are only very few mothers that can be able to stand the ground and say, if it's not working, come back home. The door is wide open just very few mothers but this is a man's case we don't know and you know men they know how to max things they'll be going through problem they will pretend they're not going to they will pretend it's gonna no, get no, better no. they will give you a benefit of a doubt it's really so sad that this happened to the man and i'm going to continue to follow this story hopefully they will have more information on what really transpired before this thing the man must have shared you with are you in US, the com your community there yeah, they will gather information about this especially the man is also in a community in another state i yeah. mean of course news will yeah. definitely private if, if i had, if to I had a, talked to a professor friend of mine he would have you know had one or two things to say because he might have known this man but i've not been able to speak with him but I hopefully will get more information about it's not easy it's not easy it's really a shock and um, that is one of the things about gun violence, but I don't want to talk about it here because of YouTube stories. People have yeah. access to those weapons. They are not supposed to have access to them mm -hmm. because they need to go through proper background checkup to know if their mental state is okay before you can own or acquire one. 
I thank God that uh, Joe Biden for, has gotten ahead of all the other presidents on background checks before you acquire a gun. You understand? So they are still working that, on it. That is that is very important. They need to run this background check. A lot of people are Alan Abaha. I don't want to use the word NA. The Alan Abaha. They are mm -hmm. mentally unstable to handle, yeah. you know, all these firearms. But because they have the money, they get the license. I don't even know the criteria used in getting uh, 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 this, this weapons. I don't know the criteria. Or anybody can just walk into any firearm stores and pay for it. Some people buy online these days, so they're trying to control all of those, and it's a good thing if they get that going. And I'm happy this administration, they've been able to come to a reasonable, mm. at least they made an improvement from what it was, because you guys hear our stories, it's always an, in the news. Uh, two weeks ago, a young boy of six years old in a elementary school in Virginia shot his teacher, six-year-old boy. So things keep Teachers. happening teacher yeah he brought the thing six to years six years think in elementary school six years thinking it was a toy toy stuff and he ah. shot the teacher so so that is How that is they even, the, the parents who even have i mean the parents who even buy the things they are so careless how, I mean, how much more? How much? How much more? I mean, then how, there how was careless one, can a parent be there was one that you leave a firearm? Yeah, there is one they're investigating right now. A toddler was seen with a with G U N at uh, those uh, their store and uh, their step their um, patio. That's their balcony. Then neighbors mm -hmm. called the police. So neighbors called, but the police got the the man or uh, the. Well, I say the father in the home said, well, I don't own one. If you happen to find one around, it belongs to my, is it brother or cousin? But how come it got to a hand of a toddler? Toddler, a toddler. might be three or three years old or thereabout. Who, shaking the thing like this, you know, shaking, shaking it up and down. What if it's unlocked? Yeah. What if it's unlocked? Julian no, Lifestyle, what, what if was thank you so much. And what he, now, he not loaded and he put it. It can be loaded and locked. It can be loaded and locked, but how? Where do they even keep these firearms? Like you know, this thing is a dangerous weapon. Why leave yeah. it where a child? Look at that boy that shot his mother in the face. How did he get? How did he get hold of this weapon? It should be locked. It should be cut in safes. Where you alone have the code yeah, to read. Awesome. You alone so have now, access. The 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 good thing is that the teacher is fine and doing well, recovering in the hospital. But the bad thing is that the child is being traumatized. And also, my, my daughter was telling that her class, his classmates will never be friends with him again because everybody in the school is going to go away from him that he might be able to shoot them. You know, that kind of a thing. So I was talking about... And he will make some friends. He will no, make no, no. new friends. He's not going to make how? friends in class. He's six years old. That means first grade. That is elementary first one. First grade. Okay. Elementary Maybe one. some troubled child may find him friendly. No, no nobody, trust me, nobody will find him <laughs> friendly. You wanted to take our teacher, so it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Maybe the brother is a police officer. I mean, no, they were not yeah. police officers, and that one had a military security officer. How did they, how did the toddler get hold of a fire? It happened like, in how? Virginia, a the toddler. state in Virginia. They they are we want gone kind of state. We want gone kind of state. The two story of AGM again. What are they doing with it? It's like Texas. Texas, they want gone in Texas and all of that. Every you have, you have the right to bear arms. That is a in American um system, you have the right to bear arms. But the thing is this, they should be doing thorough background check to make sure that those that are getting the arms are people that do not have some psychotic problems. You understand? Because we don't know what is going on in the head unless the head is examined. So they should be able to carry out those needful tests. And for, for me, if you find yourself in a marriage that is not working, take a bow. Bow out graciously. You won't be the first, you won't be the last. If you're alive, then you can live for tomorrow. Do not let yourself be added to the statistics of those their wives or husbands, mm -hmm. you know, deleted from the surface of the earth. So I'm going to say here for Professor Iwuchuku is, um, is a very hard one for me to chew. 
And also, we should also look at it from this angle that meal ticket has been taken off from his dependents. Those depending on him, they had taken off meals from the mother, you know, and all of that. So it's really so shattering a story. However, we, we want to, you know, wish the family of the loved ones, you know, ask God to help them as they deal with this issue. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Queen. I really do appreciate you. God bless you for this uh, contribution here. Thank you. You are in US. Please we want more updates. In fact, if you can help us gather more updates on this information, please do by all means. We we'll really appreciate that. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, host. I'll be taking uh, my leave now. Thank you guys for being amazing and the support on this channel. God bless you all real good. Thank you so much, Queen. I appreciate it. God bless you. Yeah, and we have Guju Talk Show here. Welcome, Uju Yoma. I really appreciate it. Julian Lifestyle, thank you so much for coming. You see, I, I, so the, the question I asked her before, and I like, what are they even doing with all these firearms? Like, they are requesting for it, they want it. Is it for protection? It is in the hands of everyone. That means there is trouble in the land. Both the good and the bad are going to have access to read. And when everybody have access to read, you come out and say, hey, I don't like your face. The next thing is, mm, because they don't like your face, you you know, they give it to you. Or you don't like a neighbor's face. You know, it's, it's, a crazy, it's a crazy thing. It should be restricted. There should be strict regulation on this. This is why couples will be having misunderstanding. And then a woman will just go in there, pick up the firearm, and then say, what the hell? How dare you say this to me? And then get shame, shame. Shame, how dare you? You go to the kitchen, you pick up my, how dare you? Like, this are human lives we are talking about. A 59-year-old man, this man got family. His life has been cut short. Of course, if he's the one taking care of the family back home, there is trouble already. His life just wasted because of one angry woman. I don't know if she got, if she snaps. I don't know what happened between them or if she has been this crazy up to this very moment. But one thing I'm saying, saying to everyone here, please, if you're married, even if you're in a relationship, you are living, you are, you, you are in a living lover kind of relationship or you're just cohabiting or you are lovers, you are not cohabiting, please, the moment you notice their anger level, you notice that they are very toxic, do not remain in it. One day they will waste your life. Don't wait until it is too late. Don't stay back because of material things. Waiting for material things is the reason why a lot have gone to the great beyond. They can't let go of their asset. They can't let go of the money. They can't let go of the house. They can't let go of the car. These things can be bought. You can get these things over so long as there is life. I know it's not easy for a man of 59 years, but whatever it is that must have made him remain in that, in that house, despite filing for divorce, is it really worth it at the, at the end of it all? Is it really worth it remaining under the same roof for this woman after filing for a divorce since 2020? Divorce doesn't go down well with, with most people. Trust me, it's not easy to want to leave someone you have spent the rest of your life with. Everyone knows you're married to this person, especially back home in Nigeria. Nobody wants to answer a divorcee. It's hard to find a courageous woman that will say, hell to hell, I'm walking out of this marriage. It takes courage. It takes courage due to societal pressure, what people will say, what will my family say, what will my church say? What will the society say? Is the reason many have remained in a very toxic marriage. Why do you care about what people will say? Does it really matter? What they say is none of your business. What matters is your happiness, your peace of mind, and your mental well-being. A lot have, have, uh, have broken down. Many people have mental mental challenges. They are dealing with mental breakdown. We don't know it. You, until you, we, we don't have to wait to see them naked on the street before we know that they have mental breakdown. And at any given opportunity, they can snap. You don't know what to lose that moment. And in the heat of argument, that person will snap. 
and go for a weapon. God forbid. May we not get married to somebody that will take our life. God forbid. No marriage is what your life. It is a union, a contract between a man and a woman. Of which if it's no longer working, that place you sign that contract, you can actually go back and, and, and say you don't want to do it. I don't do it again these days. It's not easy. But as you are signing it, go far away from that person. Only meet in court. It's the only way. Meet in court. You tell a woman you're, you, a woman knows you're divorcing her and you are still under the same roof. I know I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not here to blame him, but this is like a wake-up call to many. You know your marriage is not working and you want to fight for a divorce. Please go for separation first. Separate from him or her first before you even mention the word divorce. Take, pick up your bag and leave the house. Go to a hotel, go to a friend, leave the state, whatever you can do before you even put up for divorce. Make sure everything has been set in motion. Let them hear from your lawyer. They don't, if they're not entitled to your house, of course, you're going to get your house back. You will get your house back if they are not entitled to your house. Most of those shooting, uh, okay, shootings and gun killing is from family uh, squabbles, disagreement, yeah. Some, someone just can't shoot you like that, except you're unfortunate, uh -huh, to get a stray bullet. Uh, now, nah, okay, otherwise, now nah, disagreement. Yeah, it's usually disagreement. Eh? It's usually disagreement. <clears throat> have you seen couples? Uh, have you seen where? Okay, I've seen where couples uh, are separating but decide to still stay under one roof and be cooperating. They agreed uh, that none of them should. In their okay, she should bring in their side, side chick, but you can go out and do whatever. Okay, now th this this is so true. I have seen a case of a couple that have separated, but this case they are friends. They are separated, but they live in the same apartment. I don't know how the house is partitioned, but the man has his space, the woman has her space, and the woman comes home with her man. The man equally comes home with his woman, but they don't cross each other's path. They are separated by living under the same roof. The house is a big house. Since they are friends and they decided to live under the same roof, if they are friends, fine. But if it is toxic, why remain under the same roof? One day the woman is going to wake up or one day the guy is going to bring home a woman and the woman will feel jealous and decide to just ta-ta. Jealousy is something that has consumed many. Jealousy is something that has consumed many and made them do the unthinkable. They go out in rage and decide that mm -mm, you cannot get away with it. This is why I am saying the very first time you notice you cannot stand the person. Welcome, Nike. You made it today. Welcome, Queen. I really appreciate you. If you know you cannot stand them, please, please pack your bag, pack your bag, pack your kaya and leave that marriage. If you can't stand them, why stay there? Are we talking about the women that have become slaves in marriage? They get beaten, they get punched, they get abused, they are treated like trash. And yet, just to be a Mrs., they are still in that marriage. Mrs. Who? Have you lost your own identity as a woman? No, no, no. Have you lost your identity? Why take all that? Why remain in a toxic environment, exposing your children to all the toxic, all, all, all the crazy things happening in that home? And children grow up broken. They grow up feeling miserable. They grow up with very low self-esteem. Because the seed of fight, the bickering, the abuse going on, the violence in the family, they grow up seeing all this. Thing. How are we, tell me why those children will grow up broken. You see a young child already dealing with mental issues. A lot of children are mentally unstable. Why? 
because of the toxic environment they have been exposed to they grew up with these parents that and and see how they treat each other parents you stay you have young children who wake up every day they don't see you talk to one another they don't see you greet they don't see you eat together they don't see you even hug not to talk about kissing or even sleep in the same room what kind of what impression are you giving to them eat for milk for anything spare your children that trauma spare your children that trauma more the, the number of children who are having mental breakdown is alarming the rate is increasing by the day is going up by the day. Nike, I don't know if, you, if you've heard about this uh, professor Iwuchuku that the, 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 the wife deleted. It's crazy. So especially those in diaspora, please, let's learn anger management and communicate. Find the right way to communicate. Discuss. In your busy work, in your busy schedule, find time to trash that issue. That little thing, that tiny thing you are living, is going to grow up to become a monster that will consume you if you do not trash it early enough. You keep sweeping it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. One day it's going to matter. That tiny ant you pushed under the rug may grow up someday and become a giant that will consume you in that marriage. Dialogue communicate talk it is sad he was deleted there before yesterday 59 year old man a nigerian man and the wife is 50 years a nigerian man an Igbo man oh don't work a cut down life deleted wife life's knocked out of him like that what went wrong how did they get to this point? How did their issue degenerate to this point? It isn't the first case. There are countless number of cases abroad. America, across Europe, in UK, there are no countless number of cases of spousal killings. Is there an end to this? How do we stop this? Other than the fact that when you notice this is not working, please, Give them space. Stop listening to these messages of divorce is a sin. Divorce is a sin. Eh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -uh. Stop listening to those messages. For better, for worse, marriage is for good. Marriage is a do or that. Uh -uh. Stop listening to those marriages. You can be single and happy. You can be a divorcee and live a fulfilled life. You can be the divorcee and do so well for yourself as a single woman, as a single man. If it means bearing a divorcee twice, three times, four times, please by all means if that gives you happiness. Better still, you can stay, you can stay single. It is better to be divorced than to be six feet below. It is better to be a divorcee, carry it on your forehead. If you need to write it, it is far better than to be than to be a man's diseased. Life can't be given, but a spouse can be gotten. You can give back life, but you can get back a husband. You can get back a wife. Even divorced couple can still come back together. I have seen a case of a man and a woman that were divorced for several years, and they later came back together, and they are now married. Happily married. What they did was to, to they, they, they divorce, fight for divorce, got divorced, went their separate ways, remarried, and it didn't work out. They both divorced their, their spouses and they came back together and remarried. Life goes on. So if you are divorced to that man, it is and you love that man so much, at least give them a break. Separate. Find yourself. Life doesn't begin and end with marriage. You don't have to give your life. You don't have to sacrifice your life. In as much as marriage is a beautiful thing, you shouldn't sacrifice your life for it. Do not risk your life for it. Is it worth it at the end of the day? Two lives are gone. Two lives are gone. Grown men, not kids, not children. Their lives have been cut down. 
Jerry Springer's program opened my eyes to what is, is happening in America. Trust me, if you are watching Jerry Springer, you will be so afraid of marriage because of the crazy things they do. Sometimes I wonder if these people are okay. Sometimes I wonder, did, did they lose? I mean, they, they lost it. Very flimsy things. Very flimsy things can actually cause somebody to pick up a weapon. Very minor misunderstanding. All it takes is to sit that behind down and dialogue. That's all it takes. Sit your behinds down and dark and, and, and talk. Trash it out. And if it isn't working, you grab your bag and move. If they can't be talked to, if they're not ready for a good conversation, you can just pick up and move. I know it may be hard. Some people may be saying spice is, is easier. It's not, it's not as easy as you think. Spice is not a, it is not as easy as I think I know. But most often times, the fear of starting all over is the reason why many would rather remain in toxic marriage. The fear of starting all over, the fear of losing that house, the fear of losing that car, the fear of losing that the custody of the children. When you are gone as a woman, trust me, another woman is going to take care of your children. You can't take care of them from the grave. It is better to look after them from afar than to you than, than, than from the six feet beyond. Sister Winnie, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you. Kindly smash the like, guys. Oh, have you smashed the like? Have you thumbs up? Kindly go ahead and thumbs up, okay? Thumbs up, thumbs up. Go ahead if you have not done that. Go ahead and thumbs up. That children you're thinking, you see those children you're looking at right now? I'm going to stay because of the children. Oh no, if I leave, I may lose the custody of my children. Who will take care of my children? If anything happens to you, another woman who may be mean will take care of those children. So tell me why you should remain. Is it material things? Tell me, if it's because of the house, this man can't live in the house anymore. The woman, the wife in question is not living in the house. They are chilling in the mug. Chilling. They are chilling right there right now. If only they knew that this is how it's going to end. They are chilling in the mug. And probably, of course, they will, they will, they will have some cuts. Open them up for, for autopsy. If only they knew it is better, I would rather forfeit every material thing than remain in an abusive, in a toxic marriage where I don't know if my life is guaranteed the next day. I would rather walk away empty-handed, penniless and cobbleless. Quentina Joe, welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. People have gone crazy in America. It has gotten worse since the pandemic this is why i keep to myself i stay home and only go out to work and buy food i am also not involved in relationship aha uh -huh. you can be single and happy queen and i love that name queen tina thank you queen thank you i appreciate you bravo those children will grow up and they're going to live their lives you see space thank you so much i appreciate you for coming Man, Annie's inside. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you. Please, guys, kindly give me a thumbs up. Please do not forget. It helps the live stream, okay? Give me a thumbs up. If you can share out, you share out. Give me a thumbs up. If you can super chat, go ahead and do so. If you can join my membership, go ahead and do so. If you can click the link and join me in this discussion, please, by all means, go ahead and do so. Let us dialogue. Because this is getting out of hand. You can be single and happy. Hear what she said. Hear what this beautiful queen said. She is by herself to a voice to raise that and she's living a happy life. This is what we're talking about. Marriage is not a do or die. You know you are not even ready for it. Don't stay. Don't go in. Do not get involved. You know yourself. You know what you can take. You know your limits as a woman. You know what triggers you. A lot of people are walking around mentally broken. They are moving about mentally broken, carrying baggage, heavy baggage. They get into the life of a man, they ruin the man's life, they destroy his life. Same, li likewise, men. Some of them are carrying heavy, heavy rock around, 
on their shoulder. Look if a woman's life to rain. Avoid them if you can. And if you can stay single and happy, by all means, who says you can serve God while single? Oh my goodness, you can serve God better when you're even single. You can. All you need to do is to stay away from iniquity, stay away from fornication. You, you want to be staying, you want to stay single. Stay single. Keep your hands clean. And you can still serve God. Because we are tired of this negativities on social media every day. Look at how a grown man's life, 59 years, look at how his life has been cut short. How his life has been wasted and that of the woman as well. How did they, how did they get to this point? I am celibate for religious reasons. Whoa, my husband divorced me and I don't want another marriage. I'm in love with Jesus and I love being single and I am very, very happy. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody, can I hear hallelujah here? Can I, can I just hear a loud hallelujah? You can serve God single. Even as a divorcee, you can serve God. You can be happy. Why live a miserable life? Like the question I'm asking, how many years do we even have to live on earth here? Hallelujah, D. Yeah. Can I get more hallelujah here? Can I get more hallelujah? Can I get more hallelujah here? More hallelujah here. How many years do we have to live here on earth? How many years that you have to stay with a man? Eh? Yeah, more hallelujah, more hallelujah. Keep them coming, keep them coming, sisters. Keep them coming. How many years do we have to live here on earth that will make you live a miserable life with one man or with one woman? How many years do we have? How many years? You let's even give it that you get married, you got married at let's say 20 or 30. These days is from 30. How years you live at 60, 70 years with that woman or with that man? And then that for that period of time, you're living a very miserable life, very sad, pathetic life. Very unhappy life because you are married. Mrs. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Mrs. Miserable Life. That is what it is. Thank you. Hallelujah, sisters. Yep, yep. You can be happy. You can find your happiness as a divorcee. As a single lady, as a single guy, you can find your happiness. You don't have to tie your life. They didn't tie your umbilical cord with that man or with that woman that make you want to live a miserable life. Nobody tied your umbilical cord to, 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 to that man or that woman. How can you be living under the same roof? You don't eat. You don't talk. You don't grieve. Then what is marriage? No, I don't get it. On paper, you are married. But in reality, you are a slave. You are miserable. What is the whole essence of the marriage? If you're going to be under the roof of a man or a, uh, or a woman because I brought, but a, a man can be the owner of the house and a woman can be the owner of both of them are paying for the mortgage. You can't be living under the same roof and feeling so miserable and living a pathetic life. So life is all about working, making money. You make the money and so eat the money. Can eating money make you happy? Making money, it can you chew money and be happy? Can you chew those dollar pounds and sterling? Can you chew them and be happy? Happiness comes from within what you do with your life, it comes from within. It's called pure joy, it is from within, it comes from a place where no one can take it away from you. It's from the deep, from, from inside, like it's, it's from it's coming from inside, and only God gives that. Not man, not that woman, not that man. Nobody can give you pure joy. It comes from God. Being a carer with case, thank you so much, Queen. I appreciate you for coming. Thank you so much. God bless you. So why would you want to? 
Why wait until things escalate? If you can make it work from the onset, by all means, that is why from the beginning, you find yourself with a man or a woman, trash any very tiny issue. In fact, every tiny thing, trash it. What you can't take, do not condone it. Trash it. Work on it. Discuss it. Every habit you know you cannot take, do not condone it and say, hmm, okay, let me, tomorrow, that thing is waiting for you. It's waiting. Marriage is beautiful. But should it take your life? It is beautiful, not a death sentence. It's not supposed to be hell. If you love yourself enough, you wouldn't want to remain with someone that makes your life a living hell. Somebody that you see and your heart skips. You see, you hear the you hear your husband coming home, your heart skips. That is no longer marriage. Or you hear your wife, your wife's voice is sounding like, like, like the laughter of a witch. And you're remaining for the children. What children? The children that if God, God forbid, if anything happens, those children are going to leave. They will find their life. They will be happy. They will be fulfilled. God will take care of them. More reason you should take care of yourself. What matters most to you? What is most important to you? What is most important to you? <laughs> Those which is which is love. Ha 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 ha. Oh my god, Professor Collins, please. <laughs> telling you you hear the voice this angelic voice of your wife is sounding like the voice of an angry witch because you can't stand her presence you can't stand her voice you see your husband your heart skip bing bing you want to develop blood pressure overnight because of a man uh -uh, you don't like yourself don't you love yourself you don't like yourself as you find like this you don't like yourself as beautiful as you are, don't you love yourself? Go stand before a mirror and see how God has blessed you. Go stand before a mirror and see how gorgeous you are. See how blessed you are. Appreciate yourself. Tell yourself you can't live such misery. You can't live a life of misery because of one person. They don't tie your umbilical cord, give the man. They don't tie your umbilical cord, give that Jezebel that is frustrating your life as a man. He do you too much, you go marry another wife. He do you too much, you divorce and marry another one. Waiting. Kilo day. All this pie, pie, pie everywhere. Waiting. Not be life. This is life. You want to join them to answer Mrs. No, 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 no. Mrs., you cannot sleep at night. You are popping pills every night before you be able to sleep. Mrs., then you can't remember the last time your husband your, your husband did this small wami wami in this country like here in Brazil it's raining cat and dog in America in some places it is snowing like oh yo yo will cover duvet every night Nike will cover duvet eh D will cover duvet mommy will cover duvet trending gist I don't know if it's cold where you are you will cover and somebody is bearing misses you cannot even small servicing that other women are receiving and giving glory to God you cannot remember the last time somebody serviced you because you're living a miserable life you can't remember the last time they oil the engine but you are misses misses when was the last time God checked the engine of your car to see if it's functioning when was the last time they put a key to start the car misses when was the last time you felt a hand around your body, Mrs. Mrs. Have you gone to check if that engine is still functioning, if that engine is still alive, Mrs. Sure, you want to answer, Mrs. Has that engine been oiled for the past six months? Since this year, let's even since last year, let's even give six months. Has that engine been serviced? Has it been oiled, Mrs. Or you are doing away a oiling? 
you are missis. Another mechanic is servicing your engine. Yet you are missis. No, you are missis side chick. You are nothing but missis side chick. It is this life? How many life? How many years do we have to live? And then I am missis. Yet I can't remember the last time Oga asked me how far. Oga asked me how far. Baby, 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 how far? Eh? Any show tonight? Baby, how far? When was the last time? You are answering me, sis. When was the last time they asked you, baby, how far? Any show? I got what we're going to have, I will go dance tonight. Missis. This name, Missis, Missis has kept a lot of women in misery. Missis, you are a missis, yet your husband, your, your children are not happy because you are not happy. They are always holding themselves around. They are looking for where to go for holiday, looking for how to get out of the house because you, the missis, have decided to keep them in that toxic environment. <laughs> Cornelius, that is okay. <laughs> this man, this man, leave me alone. <laughs> You are missing, yet you are exposing your children to in, in, in a toxic environment where they can't laugh, children can't play. You're, you, are, you, you are your husband, you are home, you see the children, they will all sit down like pussy cats that have been stabbed. They will sit at the corner. They are afraid to make any noise so that your husband will not shout. Your children are still like orphans. So that you, your, your, your husband will not shout. Yet you are missing, missing in a home where your children cannot even move around. They can't play. They're looking for the slightest opportunity to run away, and you're wondering why children are broken. They are broken because you have refused to leave that toxic marriage. They are broken because you have refused to leave because you want them to suffer the same fate as you are suffering. Tell me what family is again. Is family just father, mother, and children? What is family? What is marriage? What is the name of cat in Igbo language? I don't know. Is it Obusu? <laughs> we call it, I think, Obala. We call it Obala. We call cat or bala. <laughs> if it's not bala, you want more boost. Where you are acting? I don't know. <laughs> but sincerely, come on. This this is a wake up. Can you just sit down? Sit down tonight. Ask yourself: Is it really worth it? All this sacrifice is it worth it? This pain is it worth it? This tears is it worth it? Ask yourself again. Sit down tonight and ask yourself, is it worth it? Am I living a happy life? Am I living a fulfilled life? Is all is this my is this whole thing worth it? This pain, this tears, is it worth it? You are living in a country where firearm is very easy to get. Is you so long as you, you 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 have it, you know, you know where it is. One day or Jew Madonisi, you don't know the day the person will say, Enough is enough, I can no longer take it. You don't know their, their, their boiling point. You don't know their limits. You're gambling, doing kalu kalu. You're doing kalu kalu with your life. Jesus will not come down from heaven to pack your bag for you. You will be the one to go into your closet, fold your bag, pack it together, and leave that toxic marriage. Do not wait until the son of man wastes your life. Do not wait until that man snap and decide that enough is enough. You can always start all over. Once there is life, there is hope. So long as you're breathing, so long as you are breathing, you have hope. Only those beyond, those in the great beyond, six feet below, have lost hope. But you living right now, you are alive right now, you have hope. Marriage is beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful with the right partner. Oh, it's beautiful with the right spouse. But when it isn't working, please, 
no marriage in heaven. You see this in last, last. You know, they heaven. That is why I am always advocating whatever you can enjoy here on earth, enjoy it in no day, no marriage in heaven, no benching in heaven. Fire as much as you can here on earth. Now here, now you go, you won't go there, go to do who you won't go spoil for heaven. You cannot bench anybody in heaven. It's here on earth. This, our body is given to us here on earth to make use of. So if you are with somebody, you can enjoy it. These things of the flesh. What are you doing in that marriage? When you get to heaven, forget it. This flesh, nothing that is only our soul. We'll be singing, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing, Hosanna in the uh, holy, 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 holy. This is what we'll be singing. All of us will become fire in our whites, singing, holy, holy. Holy is the most high God. This your flesh you have refused to give, that you have refused to use, it will be stripped off. You'll be stripped of it. So no benching. And you'll be here. You're wasting. Once you are 60, 70, you know the sweet as the sweet before again. That energy is no longer there. All these ties, everything is no longer there. You cannot raise your leg and touch it on the ceiling as you are doing right now. Why deprive yourself of that? They cannot tap your behind. Oh, again, what they be? They cannot press your bobby anymore. Because why he can't move the bobby? So why can't you enjoy it here on earth? Give it to somebody that values and appreciates you. Somebody you can be very happy with. If that man you're living with is making your life a hell on earth, Leave him and go look for another person. Marry another person and live a happy, fulfilled life. In Olo, one year, two years, you can't remember the last time in Michalon, ordinary kissing, that, that they are kissing every second. You, you don't remember the last time a, 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 a lips touch your own. You can't remember the last time this is Surano. You can't remember the last time I'm mm, Michalagono. You can't remember. Yet you are married. Yet you are married. And that is why mommy will always say, mommy fetch will always say, when the children are grown, like so many people do, using children as a shield, as a front, when they are grown and they've left that home, that is when you see the emptiness of the marriage. You now see how miserable was she not sharing story of a couple that have lived for how many years? Lived together? Marriage of 40 years, I mean 40 what years? has finally packed up. Because when the children are there, you are using them as a cover-up, as a front. When they are grown and left and they've gone to school, that is when the misery will double. It becomes times two. You see how empty. Thank you, your young man, your man. You now see how empty that home is. How lonely your life has been. How wasted your life has been. Wasted 40 years, waste. I call it a waste because you don't have any reason whatsoever to stay in a miserable marriage for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. It's a waste. In that 40 years, how happy have you been? In that 30 years, 20 years, how happy can you count how many times you were truly happy? Lamsi said, this man look like someone I know. Really? Wow. Check. Oh. Go and check. Eh? Come on. How many more lives will be wasted because of this? How many more lives? How many more lives will be cut short? How many more? What are we dragging? Ego. If it's not because of a... Um, house it is because of um what is it called um life insurance because of house because of car life insurance children and all that all gain a day all gain a. this life now once we live only once only once see how life when did they get married? They got married. The woman got married to uh, uh, the man got married in his fifties. 
This man is already above 50 when he married this woman that cut his life short. Just when maybe he was thinking, who knows if he'd be married more detail, we need more details if he be married and divorced before now, and then decided to do it again with this one now that has taken his life. Insurance. Side chick, secret affair. The moment you notice something you know is going to threaten your life. Please, quietly, peacefully. Yeah, now, don't want all these things. Last, last. Waiting the man carry go, nothing. What the woman le left this one with? Nothing. Nothing. Not everyone knows how to eat breakfast. I be the sweet for pigeon fast. Not be everybody sabi chop breakfast, clean out. Some people you serve them breakfast. No, they don't want it. It chunks their tummy. They want to do something painful. They want to hurt you. They want to. They want to snuff the life out of you. They want to make your life miserable. Just because you say chop breakfast. Hallelujah, Lonzi. Kita ke patara church. <laughs> You know, that is why when you are serving the breakfast, leave that house when you are serving that breakfast. Because some people will have running tummy after you gave them that breakfast. So we develop running tummy. The moment they eat the breakfast, you serve them. Hmm? Again, it's high time women and girls start to understand that men are polygamous in nature. Mm. Sister, don't go there. Oh, hallelujah, sister, don't go there. Because, <laughs> don't go there. Don't go there. They are polygamous in nature. But of course, my gender, we are not ready for this discussion. Please don't even go. <laughs> don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> Hey, waiting this one life that we are supposed to enjoy. Enjoy the communion that God has given to us to enjoy in marriage. Enjoy the lovey dovey, the romance and everything. This one life, we want to use it to we want to finish ourselves and live miserable. Allah Rumaje. The Yoruba to say Allah Rumaje. The Igbo to say Chukwa Adju Asibokwa. How says, how do they say it, Nike? Help me because I know you lived in the north before. How do they say it? Um, uh, is it I, I like here, yeah. Mm -hmm. The northerners will say, I like here, yeah. Englishman will say, God forbid. Igbo will say, Asibokwa Chukwajo. Yoruba will say, Olong Maje. May God forbid. Don't be man go kill me. I go grow old. I will enjoy the fruit of my labor. Don't be man matter. Don't be man matter. Hmm? Allah Rumaje. <laughs> yeah, this is a TV show. Thank you so Yes, Allah Rumaje. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you, Queen. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Allah Rumaje, this one life, you don't know when they will snap. You don't know, you don't know when one one or one, one demon will penetrate their head and say, shh, shh, shh. she wants to leave you. So you let her eat your money and leave you. Shh. See that gun, see that knife, pick it up, use it. The devil is very wicked and tricky. Do not let it get you and ruin you. Do not remain in a toxic environment. That home is toxic. It's hurt. It's doing damage to your children's mental health. It's, how, it's, it's destroying their self-esteem. It's ruining their lives. You may not know it, but when these children grow up, this sometimes the cycle continues. Like it's, it, They see it as a normal thing. They carry it on. Mistreat their wives or their husbands. Because this is the environment you expose them to. 
They know nothing about peace. The devil is very wicked. Yes, uh, 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 Cora. The devil is very wicked and tricky. Just, she served you breakfast. How can she? After everything. Mm -mm. Don't let it happen. Don't, don't let her go get away. She has another boyfriend. After everything, you brought her to Bodo Yibo. You brought her to abroad. Remember, you are the one that gave you gave her this card. You gave her this. <clears throat> and then the devil will now point at one weapon. Inside you, you are fighting a demon. Only you fighting that demon within you. Only you struggling. When this thing started, it's not overnight. This didn't start over. And all this, <clears throat> all this spouse are killing. Nobody wakes up overnight and the devil comes upon that person and then the person picks up a weapon. No, no, no. It's not an overnight thing. Except now village people. Thank you for the terms. Except it's village people that use remote control and they remoted the person's uh, life. Except it's village people that use remote control. Otherwise, the devil cannot use a, a happy home. The devil cannot just come into a, a, a happy home and then whisper to the wife to go and carry knife or carry weapon or whisper to the husband to go and give her bass bulls. It takes two people that have been fighting, cursing themselves out. Hmm? Two people that have been fighting, cursing themselves out, tearing themselves down. It, that is, it is only that environment that the devil can penetrate. The devil doesn't penetrate, eh? It doesn't penetrate happy home easily. It is when the home is toxic, that is where the devil can enjoy and come and dance around and go. When the house is hot, when the environment is toxic, when the man is thinking about how can this woman do this to me, and the woman is thinking, who the hell is, does he think he is? The devil will look and say, okay, I think this is a fertile ground. And come there to just... Just ruin everything. Do not give them room to waste your life. The decision is left with you and you alone. And how? Build your home. Trash anything. You can start all over with your spouse. You can start all over. You can always start all over. You can always start. You can always start all over. The devil is a spirit <laughs> that gets into one if you permit, if you allow it. If your home is already tearing apart and you think you can make it work, see a, see a professional. Go for counseling. Work it out if you can. If you can. You are sure that you can save that person. You can redeem your marriage. You can always start all over. But not when one party is not willing. If they are not willing, there is little or nothing you can do. It takes a willing heart to go to counseling. It takes somebody willing to save the marriage to go for therapy if they know they have a problem. But that time you are telling that man, can we go and see a therapist? Or can we go and see a, a counselor? And the man is saying, who the hell? What do you think? Are you, are, you, are you insinuating something is wrong with me? Are you saying I'm not man enough to run my home? No, know that he is beyond redemption. When you sit down and discuss it, we are having issues. Table the issues. What are those issues? Get a pen and paper and table everything down. Discuss it. What is that? Table everything you're concerned. Table it down and then sit down. If they are ready to sit down with you and discuss it in a very quiet tone. In a very quiet tone because you want to save it. You feel it can be redeemed. Sit down with them and talk it over. But a man or a woman who isn't willing to sit down and have a, a mature conversation or dialogue, there is nothing you can do. There is nothing you can do. Even in this abroad, there are women receiving gas and they are quiet inside the room. 
The man comes out and gives them that punches. They are quiet. Are we talking about the women that every at, at every slightest quarrel or misunderstanding they pick up the phone and call nine one one? Every day they are reporting their husband. Every day nine one one. You can't have conversation you without shouting, without calling nine one one. When did the man get tired of this? Get him with the nine one one one. Boom. It is very delicate and broad. That is why do not give room. Anything that needs to be trashed, the earlier the better. They say a stitch in time saves nine. Save it today. Do not wait for tomorrow. You don't know about tomorrow. Do not wait for tomorrow. Professor Iwuchuku is gone. If anybody had told this man day before yesterday, that by that time, that night, uh, they did 9, 9.53, that you will not see 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., the man wouldn't have believed it. If anyone had told him that, ah, bros, 12 noon, you're, going to, you're not going to have lunch, he wouldn't have believed it. That is why we don't know what to do. Let's be careful. The earlier, the better for every one of us. Make your marriage work if you can. Drop pride. You see, that's one word I always use here. Pride. Ego. Is a downfall of man. That's why the Bible says pride goes before a fall. Ego, over bloated ego of a man and a woman is something that risks marriage because when the ego is over bloated, they don't want to have a conversation. They feel they are bigger than every other person. They feel nobody can call them to order. They feel you can't talk to them. The, over, the, the ego is over bloated. And for a woman, pride. They say, is it not pride that made God to pursue Lucifer from a born of a beautiful angel? I thought that he and Anna. Pride can make you lose that beautiful family, that precious home, that good man. If we can all drop our pride and ego, Marriage will work. It will try. If we can drop our pride and ego and do the needful and find a way to have a honest conversation, a mature discussion, communicating effectively, we can always save our homes. But if you can't, by all means, Stay single, unhappy, and live a very fulfilled life. God help us. I pray for the family of Professor Iwuchuku that God will give them the fortitude to bear the loss. And as for him, eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let your perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul rest in peace. Yanapanandokwa. Wherever his spirit is around now, may he, may I pray he find peace. This isn't the life he bargained for. This isn't how he planned the whole thing. He didn't go to school, graduate, became a professor for how many years, only to end up in the hands of one Jezebel. He didn't study all these years, struggle to get to America, establish himself, start working, only to end up in the hand of one Jezebel. This is how this this isn't how he planned it. This isn't how he planned his old age. He didn't know. If anyone had told him, maybe day before yesterday, clearly, if he had received a clear vision, he would chuku leave this house. He would chuku carry your bag and leave. If he had See me. That is what we don't see. We don't know. That's what nobody knows tomorrow. If anyone has, if if, if you have seen that clear vision, you will to go carry your bag and leave. Leave this state right now. Go to another state, or do not even come back home. Do not even come back home. Maybe if he didn't even come back home that day, he would have still been alive. That thing that is troubling that woman that made them. That that thing that caused this whole argument that degenerated this bad that will make you know both of them lose their life wouldn't have happened. Well, because we don't know as human 
Buyur Hacino. Let's do our best. And take actions when it's required, when it's needed. Procrastination sometimes doesn't help. May God help us. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you for your time here. Thank you, being a carer with case. Trending Gist with Octavia, Gist Odoha, Nike K World, Aziza TV Show, Lonzi Blog, Mommy, Fechi, Cornelius, Okudili, Oyo Yongwa, Nyoma. Thank you so much, Sister Winnie, the Cheese family. Thank you, Trending Gist. Thank you, um, Professor Lifestyle D. Thank you so much, colleagues. I appreciate you. UC Space, Gift Honor Hand, Quintina. Quintina, thank you so much. If you're still watching me, please give a thumbs up. Let me know. Just drop an emoji. Let me know you're still watching me, okay? And if today's your first time coming across this channel, please do not forget to click the like, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell because I do this every Monday to Friday unless something comes up and I miss a day in a week, okay? Connect to the family. And my membership is open. You want to support this lady here every day on her live stream? You can join my membership to support me. Nothing is too small. Just check the levels and see any which of the levels that you can support me on on this channel. Okay, just to keep me going. You know, I have bottled water kind of. You know, now to keep fueling the energy. Right? <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Quintina. Thank you. God bless you. Um, D, yeah, D. Thank you so much. I'm trying to call the names of the people here. Annie's inside. God bless you. Who did I miss? I know. I have, uh, yeah, Tonda Scorpion, Julian Lifestyle. Thank you. Welcome. I appreciate you. Do talk show, Estelle family. God bless you. God bless every one of you here for your time and delicious kitchen. Thank you. Yes, the cheese family, Gabriela. Thank you, Mom of Triplex, Epic Mazza. God bless you, Lady Posh. Thank you so much. Wow, wow, wow. Who else here? Am I missing anyone out here? Am I missing any beautiful queen or king here? Let me know in the chat, but I don't think I did. God bless you all. See you tomorrow. It's Freaky Friday. Can they just let us do Freaky Friday, please? Like, let's go freaky on Friday. If you are in for Freaky Friday, can I get a talk? Just, just give me that. Like, if you are in for Freaky Friday tomorrow, uh, even if they like, they should bring any glass boat. We'll do our Freaky Friday. So if you are for Freaky Friday tomorrow, let me see your hands. Give give a wave. Give a wave if you're prepared for Freaky Friday tomorrow. Wave, let's know. Yeah. For <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so if you are for Freaky Friday tomorrow, wave your hand. Let's prepare for Freaky Friday. Let's make the Friday wait. Let's make it freaky. Let's make it hot and spicy. <laughs> leave Cornelius. For me, Fetch, he's asking. For me, Fetch, just leave Cornelius. You know, look at The kind of questions you do ask me sometimes, you look at him. <laughs> yes. If you are for Freaky Friday, can you get up here and give me a wake? <laughs> Raise your uh -huh. I see a lot of people are up for Freaky Friday tomorrow. Any bus bus wake up, I like just to go drown from <laughs> from window because we want to spice up our marriage tomorrow. We want to make it freaky, hot, and spicy. See you guys tomorrow, same time here on Freaky Friday. Bye everyone. <laughs> oh God. Bye everyone. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I leave you guys with this beautiful song of mine. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. The reason why I play this song every day after my live stream is that I know peace of mind is paramount. It's very important. If you are peaceful, if you have peace of mind, you will be happy. If you have peace of mind, your marriage will work out. If you have peace of mind, you're going to live a very fulfilled and happy life. Peace of mind. Your mental well-being is very important. And of course, with that comes peace, okay? See you guys tomorrow. Same time here. I'm leaving you with my beautiful song, Peace of Mind.
Okay, where is it? Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I need you because I want you. That you don't leave one for me. I'm going to be home after the party. The bird is dressing me. I want you because I know you got me. And you're my company. And I'm going to call you. You can turn up. And you always come to for me. Peace of my heart.